So, I already recorded this video, but I didn't feel like it went well. I felt like I felt I sounded kind of negative, which I was being negative, uh, but I thought I'd re-record it. Anyway, it, this is a follow-up to my last video where I talked about having a ROM chip, a read-only chip, uh, inside a flash drive so that you can hand out these flash drives that have space that you can write on them, but also have a ROM chip that, without taking apart the device, uh, you can't write to, and it will have some sort of media on there. And I forgot to mention in that video, one of my main ideas for that, and I don't know why I forgot to mention in the video, is Linux distros. Let's say you go to a Linux conference, and whoever, Fedora or whoever's handing out flash drives, wouldn't it be great if that flash drive had a copy, a bootable copy of Fedora on it? And yeah, if it's, if it's ROM like I'm talking about, you know, it eventually would be an outdated copy of Fedora or whatever Linux distro, um, but it'd still be neat on there, where if you gave them one, and someone might just erase it and put whatever they want on there, where this would be a ROM chip that you could keep on there, and again, without taking apart the device, they couldn't write to it, but it would still be beneficial for them to carry it around because it is storage that they can use. And a lot of people in the comments thought that this would be very difficult to create something like this. And I can tell you right now, I could solder together something like this. Of course, it'd be larger than an actual product in a flash drive size, but it doesn't have to be. Because again, we all know that, you know, storage, I mean, this you can get gigs and gigs and gigs on a little SD card like this. And as far as making it read-only, I mean, look at a standard side S SD card. I mean, a card like this, something this size, you can actually buy computers. I've done videos on this before. Go on to Amazon or wherever you buy your computer stuff and search for... Um, uh, wireless SD cards and you'll find some that connect to Wi-Fi. You know how they work? They're actually little computers running Linux and there are a lot of hacks out there to actually get shells on them. They usually have two or three hundred megahertz processors in them. I forget the RAM. It's not a whole lot but you, you have a full Linux computer inside an SD card which is amazing and we don't even need something that big but the reason I bring this out is to show how easy it is to make something um, read-only. We all know there's there's a little switch. It's not going to focus on that for me. There's a little switch on standard SD. See, now it's read-only. And literally, inside the flash drive, you can have two little flash chips in there and have a jumper that you need to jump to write to one. So for people to override that, they have to take apart the device, jump that, and write, which most people wouldn't. But, again, you can put advertisements on there. You know, you have a company, you can have just a... It could, it could be small. It could be a couple of megabytes with just maybe a link to your website, so that that's always there. And every time someone plugs in the computer, it's going to show up as a drive. But you plug it in, and it's actually going to show up as two drives, the ROM drive that they can't write to, and a flash drive uh, that you can write to, the standard. Now, some people said, you know, again, in the first video, I referred to them as different partitions. Really, they'd be separate um, flash chips. Someone said they don't have to be separate flash chips, that you can, you know, write something to the drive, to not to write over this part of the memory. Possibly. Possibly. I don't really know. I know that you can, you know, obviously make read-only uh, drives, um, but you can always format them. And you want to, what, what we're trying to do is avoid that. We're trying to get something that it's written to, and it stays on there, so that your information's on there. And again, it's like advertising. You buy flash drives, custom flash drives with your company logo and information on it that people look at. But, you know, those are fun. You store something out, you throw it in the corner. But if, uh, if it was something useful, again, the distro of Linux you like, you carry it around, and it's also storage. Uh, again, eventually it would be outdated, but depending on what you're, you're advertising, um, or maybe maybe you're a musician, as an example I gave in the last video, and you want to put a little demo, uh, you know, your single on there. So every time someone plugs in the computer, you know, it would show up as different drives. On a Windows drive, it would show up as, you know, your E drive and your F drive, or your F drive and your H drive, or whatever, you know, Windows does. And it's something somebody said, in what, uh, uh, I think at least two people said in the comments, and I have to try this out, that if you take a flash drive and you put more than one partition on it, Windows doesn't like that, which surprises me, but at the same time doesn't surprise me because it's Windows. And, I mean, you can partition your hard drive in multiple ways, and Windows, I know, will detect that. And storage is storage. The operating system really shouldn't look at them any different. Um, but who knows? I'm going to have to put multi -partition, multiple partitions on a um, flash drive and plug it into the computer at work and see if they both show up. I just can't imagine that they wouldn't, but at the same time, I'm not completely surprised that it wouldn't. Um, but again, in this particular case, what I'm talking about, they would actually show up as different drives. Again, it would be like taking two USB drives, plugging them to a USB hub, and then plugging that USB hub into the computer, but shrinking it all down to fit inside a flash drive. So, 
That's my thoughts. I don't think it would be that hard to create. Obviously, manufacturing like that with any type of manufacturing, you know, you'd have to come up with new the the prints for it. You know, the 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 um what's the word on the schematics for it, and get the boards printed. But I don't I don't see it being that expensive. I mean, again. Right now, you can go get custom flash drives made with your logo and whatnot on the outside. For under five bucks a pop, if you buy them in bulk and you only get one or two gigs, I think two gigs is usually standard for those lower end ones, and they're not the fastest ones in the world. We know that. They're promotional things you give out. And I know some people in the comments are like, oh, I would never plug a promotional USB drive into my computer. Okay. Um, I'm not super concerned about that. Yeah, I know things are malicious. You plug it into a test machine, you can monitor what it does. It's not that hard. And... Um, I mean, technically, they could put a delay on stuff so it doesn't do anything until the 100th, you know, plug-in, and then it can start doing hit attacks of some sort, I guess. Yeah, sure. Okay, you're, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, but regardless of that, people do get these promotional flash drives. They do plug them into their computers. And again, it'd just be great to have something on there, you know, make it usable for them, but also every time they plug it in, your media shows up, whatever it is, your music, your video, link to your website, your, your, you know, I, I not that this would really work great for that, but, uh, you know, 15 years ago when I went for my interviews with the fire department, I actually had mere little business card size CDs. I still have a stack of them in there. I actually put my, um, resume on there and it updated off my website at the time. So if I added anything to my resume, they pop in the computer, it would automatically show the updates. And I've been told, because I work with the guys that hired me now, I've been working there for almost 16 years, uh, I was told a lot that they were very, very impressed that I was able to create a CD, uh, you know, a little business size CD card that had my resume on it. Not one of them actually put it into a computer, so the CD could have been blank for all they knew, but they were impressed that I did that. Anyway, I do thank you for watching, and again, I don't see this as a difficult task at all to create a product like this. I see it as having a good use, and I don't think it would be expensive to do. Uh, again, you can get uh, flash drives, you know, just a two gig flash drive for $2, you know, if you buy 10 of them or whatever. How hard is it for the people in manufacturing to put a second chip on there and have it work like a hub? I don't think it would increase the size at all. Again, um, we know that USB flash drives can be really small. This is this one has USB-C on one side and standard USB. I can't remember what that connection is called. Um, and and you can get these, you know, with 64 gigs for, for 15, 20 bucks at this size. So we know that the storage can be done, the flash drive can be done, is basically just putting two of these together, which 90% of this is the actual USB plug but then putting a chip on there that works like a hub so that it shows up as multiple devices. Uh, and again, as far as portability, there were a lot of people saying, oh, you'll never get it working from, form from one operating system to another. Uh, yes, you just format it in. I know it's not a great format, but some sort of fat format, just like flash drives are when you normally get them. And it will work on everything you plug it into, except for maybe an iPhone. It should work on, on iOS. It should work on Windows. I know it works on Android. That's what this is for. I can plug this into my phone or my tablet. I have one that's micro USB as well, uh, or just Linux. Uh, all those platforms will read those formats, so I don't see a cross-compatibility issue at all. There's nothing special about it. It's just a flash drive, again, with some sort of jumper like a switch on an SD card to make it read only. And again, they would have to take apart the case and jump it. And you know what? That would be fun to do. If you're into that, even if I'm the person who made it, I, you know, I know that most people are not going to do that, but the people who do that, they're going it, to, it, it's making them think about the product, which is based on my company, you know, and then you could flash a new version of Linux on there when the one on it gets outdated anyway, or, or just make them all netboot. There you go. Problem solved. Anyway, I do thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope that I clarified a little bit on what I was trying to accomplish uh, talking about in the last video uh, because a lot of people in the in the comments just seemed very very confused on what I was trying to say thinking that it would be like this impossible task and again I could take two flash drives now and a USB hub and solder them all together or not even have to solder them together but you know connect them all together and it's basically do what I'm saying I'm just saying shrink it down and put it in one little case that's shaped like a flash drive that's it I do thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day. Filmswaychris.com, that's Chris with a K. Link in the description.